Hello and welcome back to the second section on our part on the formal foundations of answer set programming. So in this section we deal with semantics. More precisely, we deal with a stable model semantics. The idea of this semantics is, well, once you have actually formulated your problem as a logic program, then uh, you can associate with this logic program several stable models. Each stable model will represent an alternative solution to your original problem. Take for instance timetabling at university or at school. You write the rules of your timetabling problem, for instance that you cannot be at, in two rooms at the same time and so on and so forth. Everything is specified in a logic program, you push the button and get an arbitrary number of stable models out. And each stable model is an alternative solution, an alternative timetable for your original problem. So stable models already sounds heavy, right? So it's they're stable, what is that? What is even a model, right? So let's start with this and first look at the question, what is actually a model? The ultimate purpose of a model is to capture solutions. And to this end, a model is composed of variables that you're actually using in the problem description. Like for instance, if you want to model the constraints of timetabling, you may have a variable that designates the beginning of a course and another that designates the end of the course. And now you can assign variables to, to them. And so the very basic thing is the notion of an assignment here. So, and an assignment is nothing else than a function mapping variables to values. Now, this, this is, well, this allows to make any arbitrary assignments. So of course, we are interested in the ones that actually are solutions. And these are assignments that satisfy a set of constraints. So in the timetabling example, so if you have a variable for the beginning of a course and the end of the course, a natural constraints would, a constraint would be that the beginning is before the end of uh, the course and that presumably, well, you have a duration of 90, of 90 minutes, right? Or, or, or two hours or however how long your course is. And so you would formulate, formulate a constraint and a, a solution is then an assignment that satisfies, among others, also this particular constraint. Let's look at a very small example. So we just look at functions that map variables, and here I just chose x, y, z, that map this into this in the domain into a range, and here I chose the integers. Could be anything else. And here's a particular assignment now. This assignment assigns, uh, well, x to 3, y to 1 and z to 7. And again, there are very many assignments uh, that one can form over x, y, z and mapping them into natural numbers. Keep this in mind, right? But now we want only those assignments that satisfy a problem and the problem is, is specified by constraints. Okay, let's look at a, at, a, at a little problem here. So this problem is composed of two constraints. The first set that 2 times x is smaller than z and x plus y is smaller than two times z. Actually, this reading is not 100% correct because what it should say is uh, given an, an assignment to x, x, y, and z, two times the value of x is smaller than the value of z and the value of x plus the value of y is smaller than two times the value of z. Well, in our case, this is the case. Uh, so two times the value of x is two times three is six, smaller than the value of z, seven. Yeah, six is smaller than seven. And x plus, or the value of x plus the value of y is 4, and this is smaller than 2 times the value of 7, which is 14, right? So this particular assignment satisfies both constraints, and you can imagine that there are many other assignments over the integers that satisfy this toy problem. Okay, so this gives you more or less a flavor of the basic structures that are involved to define a model. In fact, a model is nothing else than a solution to a problem defined in a logical language. So more or less what we have seen here with assignment and solution, we now have to specialize to the case of a logical setting. So, but before we talk about a model, let's talk about the counterpart of an assignment. So an assignment is nothing else than a function mapping variables to truth values. So instead of having arbitrary values here or an arbitrary range here, we, we, have, we consider only truth values. In most of the cases, we consider a Boolean setting, and Boolean means we have two truth values, and which we denote uh, by uppercase T and uppercase F, which stand for true and false, respectively. But be, well, already to, to, ha to have a sneak preview, we'll also be using 
three valued interpretations sometimes with an additional third truth value that stands for undefined. Well, to capture situations where we have not yet calculated the truth value of a variable. Okay, then here's an example. Again, just a function that maps variables a, b, c, but now to truth values. And this particular function maps a to true, b to true, and c to f, just as above. Very straightforward generalization. One thing that, or the thing that uh, actually distinguishes uh, arbitrary assignments from solutions is the satisfaction of constraints. And here, of course, we are in a logical setting, but let, let me make, th make this a bit more uh, well, precise, but, but not in a, in a very formal way. This was hand-waving. And just say that the interpretation satisfies a formula if it evaluates the formula to true. And again, Let's not go into full details here. Let's just see this with an example in a sec. So anyway, this gives us a notion of satisfaction of logical constraints. And then we can simply define a, a model. A model is nothing else than an interpretation satisfying a set of formulas. Or if we look at logic programs, our formulas are implications, hence rules. So here we go. Uh, interpretation and a model is nothing else than the counterpart of an assignment and a solution in a logical setting. I still owe you the example. So here is the, logical con the set of logical constraints. We have two of them. One is a conjunction, the other one is a disjunction. So the first one, a and b, is true if, the value, if both the value of a and the value of b is true. And this is an inclusive disjunction, which is true if at least one of the values of the variables is true. Now let's check this. So we assign a and b both the truth value true. Hence, A and B is true. So this formula here is true. Good. So the second formula, oh, there C is actually false, but it's not a problem because still, since A is true, that's enough to make the whole disjunction true because A, A is true and then it doesn't matter what truth value C gets. So you see, this is more or less the same thing, just that here we have logical constraints and what we will be doing in, in our course, we will actually not look at arbitrary logical constraints, but rules. But I would just wanted to, to indicate to you how simple these notions are. Okay, we've seen now that interpretations and models are special cases of assignments and solutions. And the good news is we don't really have to become very technical on that. In fact, we can make our life much, much uh, more simple by using sets for representing interpretations. So in the logical setting, what we can do is we represent an interpretation by the set of the models that have been assigned the truth value true by this, by this interpretation. So let's look at an example. So this is our interpretation that we have been looking at before, where A becomes truth value true and B becomes truth value true. And we represent this guy simply by the set that contains A and B with the convention that these guys are true and all the atoms that have been left out, in our case C, are assigned the truth value false. The cool thing about this is that we can actually uh, characterize um, the stable model semantics by using such sets and, not, and we don't have to think about a logical or, or any logical, um, let's say, principles and can accept this just as, just as they are and neither have to talk about interpretations and models, nor about assignments and solutions. So I think this is, this is, a, is, is a nice thing, even though I will be doing this, the relation to, to logic here and, the, here and there, because simply one, one gets another understanding of it. But you can access the stable model semantics and answers in programming with no background in logic at all. So in case I frightened you by talking about interpretation and models, relax, take it easy, and now uh, let's actually see, first of all, before we do this introduction, what type of characterizations are around. In fact, there's a whole zoo of characterizations of stable models around. I list here now th those that are somehow covered or in particular relevant for the course, and eight of them actually. So what I promised you actually is that I give you a characterization of the stable models that works just by sets. And this is the original Redux-based characterization by Michael Gelfond and Vladimir Lifshitz. And what I also did here with these characterizations, I ordered them. Because if you look at the very last one, you may ask, yourself, what is this? Uh, it's a C++-based characterization. And what I mean with this, after all, 
the implementation of, um, of CLASP, the solver in, in our ESP system Klingo, is also a specification of stable models. It tells you exactly, given as input a logic program, how, uh, how to determine the stable models of it. And in this way, actually, this list also represents a degree of refinement. Uh, okay, let's, let's just explain a little bit uh, what, what, what all this means, right? As I said, the first one is the historical, the traditional one that only uses sets and is not based on logical concepts. Then there is, of course, logical characterization. Interestingly, that was discovered years after the stable model semantics was uh, invented. And one can, one can describe what a stable model is by giving the definition of a, of, a, of a logic and a satisfaction relationship. This will not be part of the mainstream of the course, but I will definitely do a video for those of you who are interested in that. Then the axiomatic characterization is a translational one, where the idea is you take a logic program and you translate this logic program into formulas, and then these formulas describe in classical logic uh, what the stable models are of the original logic program. And this gives us quite some insights and actually it already serves us as the first blueprint of the data structures of the solver. Then the operational characterization looks at how can I come up with operators that I apply to sets so that the end, the, the resulting uh, set that I obtain are the stable models. And these are very important uh, actually to, to characterize the propagation in a solver. And historically, we were one of the first characterizations that were used. So that's actually quite interesting because uh, the axiomatic characterization goes back to work of Keith Clark at the end of the 80s, 78. Operational characterization was well, beginning of the, of the 90s or so, right? So these are old concepts that are now still reflected in the, in the, uh, in, in the current implementations. Proof theoretic characterizations, again, this will not be something we'll be covering in the mainstream of the course, but if I have time, I will also do some videos on that. Here the idea is that uh, you come up with a proof system that describes the search space of the solver. And depending on which operations or which, which inference rules you, you, you give uh, the proof system, you get different search space and this reflects different, different, uh, actually different, different, uh, different operations of a, of a solver. So then, finally, the constraint-based characterization, this is more or less how the data structures of the solver have to look like, but on an abstract level, that whenever you come up also with a new language construct, then the idea is here are the set of constraints that capture that, that must be implemented. Well then, again, a bit, a bit more concrete, but far more abstract than, than the C++ implementation is the algorithmic characterization. That's more or less what we do at the end of the course. And this actually will show you quite some interesting and quite sophisticated algorithms that actually learn from their mistakes. And that's, that's more or less the key, the key idea of these algorithms that have originally uh, been developed again in the, in the 80s. I think I mentioned Richard, Richard Stallman and the intelligent backtracking. And then the, all this has been refined in the area of satisfiability testing. Really cool stuff. So stay tuned until that. That will be well in many, many hours of lectures. And last but not least, there's another, perspective, there's another angle to the fact that there are so many characterizations of stable models. And this is because when stable models were invented, and again, end of the 80s, uh, Vladimir and Michael uh, proposed this, uh, uh, among others. Um, stable models was new, right? So there was no established logical framework, and hence it took quite a while to come up with, with the best characterizations for... for, for, for the purpose one had, to, had in mind. And there's a paper actually by Vladimir that keeps changing its title. I think now, at least that's the one I found on the web, it's, it's, it talks about 13 definitions of a stable model. But these two papers, one is about 12 definitions and then the other one is the revision 13 definitions. Okay, anyway, so this is just to give you a little overview, also a bit of a roadmap and why the, what all these characterizations are good for. We will now start with the very first characterization that characterizes stable models in terms of sets as the basic ingredients. Again, I will sometimes make a relation to logic, but don't despair. This is not essential at all. This is just for those people among you who know a bit about logic, that, that they get a point of reference to other logics or classical logic that is around. Okay, so what is a stable model can actually be traced back to the question, what is the meaning of a logic program?
and this will be next.